Hi, welcome to the second part of my vlog about songwriting. The first half I talk more so about lyrics and coming up with lyrics. And this half I'm going to talk more so about guitar. And then at the end I'll talk about, a bit about the both together and structuring the song and whatnot. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention before I started the guitar section that I forgot to mention in the previous video. Um, I was talking about near the end there um, how you shouldn't just try to sit there and think of something perfect to say before you write anything out because uh, then you're going to end up with nothing, you know? Um, where I was going with that before I got sidetracked like I usually do um, I was going to say rather than doing that just write out anything and everything that comes to mind even if you don't think it's really that great or something you definitely want to include in your song. Just keep writing and writing, then near the end of the, uh, then once you're done, you know, you'll have a whole bunch of words in front of you. And from there, you can just take out what you don't like, keep what you do, mix sentences together, add a word here, take out a word here, you know, basically just refine it into a song. Um, another thing I wanted to mention about writing that I forgot to, um, is rhyming. Uh, and now this is something I have trouble with myself, it's something I need to work on, uh, but your songs don't necessarily have to rhyme. Even if you're writing it out and when you read it, it doesn't sound that good or it doesn't flow well, um, well there's a huge difference between singing a song and reading it. And so it doesn't have to rhyme, in fact I think a lot of songs um, by famous artists don't rhyme. Actually, probably most songs by famous artists don't rhyme. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't have to rhyme, and like I said, that's something I have trouble with. Uh, I always rhyme, and I ha uh, have a lot of trouble breaking away from that habit. Um, but yeah, if you read it out and it doesn't sound good because it doesn't rhyme, or whatever, well, the way you sing it, and having guitar behind it and everything, you can figure out a vocal melody to make it sound well. And, um, you know, uh, I'm not saying rhyming is necessarily a bad thing. I think it's a good thing in a lot of cases. But just keep in mind that you don't have to rhyme. And, um, yeah. So, uh, I figured I'd talk about guitar now. So, um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was um, when you're practicing, uh, there's kind of two ways you can practice. Uh, since I ever started, um, well, let me, let me first say, there's the one way, a lot of people do this, so I'll go online, look up a tab for a song they really like, uh, I'm not talking about singing, I'm just talking about guitar riffs, uh, like, they'll hear a song by Led Zeppelin, for example, they really like, and, uh, they'll go online to learn the tab, uh, and then they practice that way. That's good, and it's always good to learn cool riffs and whatnot, uh, you can develop your hand strength and whatnot that way. Um, but one thing you can't develop uh, when learning other people's music is you can't develop your own personal style. Uh, and so when I practice, I just like to Im uh, improvise and just, uh, you know, screw around and play, you know, freestyle. Uh, it's good to do this because, uh, like I said, you're going to develop your own style. And one key thing I find in making a song that appeals to a lot of people is something that's unique and something that's your own. And um, yeah, just uh, and improvising is a lot funner too, I find anyway, for me. That's just an opinion, but uh, you can go in to play a Led Zeppelin or whatever, or you could just start playing and not knowing where you're going to end up or how it's going to turn out or, you know, what you can come up with. Um, that, that's what makes it fun for me. Sometimes I'll start a little improvisation and I'll start with something, you know, a little basic riff. And I don't expect it to really go on for long, but before you know it, I'm completely, you know, consumed and I end up jamming for like 45 minutes, you know. Um, so yeah, that's good for improv. If you don't improvise a lot, uh, I recommend you just start. Uh, you might sound bad or shitty at first, but eventually you're going to start to memorize some scales and 
Um, it's the only way you can get better anyways, right? It's practicing. So, uh, yeah, that's a big part of songwriting is originality. And, uh, I mean, you can be inspired by people. A lot of my music is inspired by Elliot uh, <laughs> <Elliot> Smith. <laughs> um, or my, a lot of my music is even inspired by artists like uh, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails or um, Marilyn Manson even. Or, you know, bands that don't really sound anything like what I play. That's because you don't necessarily need to be inspired by the genre but you can be inspired by the guy's voice, uh, how he sings. Uh, you can be inspired lyrically, how you write lyrics. Um, you know, different chords they use or whatever. Uh, you don't need to sound like someone to be inspired by them, is what I'm saying. Um, so what, what I was getting at, uh, originality is good, but, you know, that doesn't mean you can't be inspired by people or influenced by it. I think that's a lot of uh, the reason why a lot of people get into songwriting in the first place because someone that they really like um, made them think, I want to make music like that. That's the case for me and Elliot Smith. Like, I played guitar uh, before I knew about Elliot Smith, but I didn't really start singing and songwriting very much until I got into him. Um, and when I'm writing, I don't consciously try to make my music sound like anyone, but. If you're influenced by someone enough, it's going to do that by itself. Uh, okay, so... Uh, you'll notice, after you write a few songs, uh, probably, uh, this is the case for me anyways, that there are a few chords that you frequently go back to. Um, and you might feel like, uh, oh, I shouldn't use this chord because I already used it in like my last four songs. Well, um, it's okay if you use the same chords over and over. I do it. Uh, your songs aren't necessarily all going to sound the exact same if you put an A minor in every one of them. Because every uh, chord does have its own individual sound. But what really gives a chord its sound is the chords that are played before and after it. So an A minor might sound this way, but with a G and an E7 after it, it's going to... all three of them combined um, are going to form together to form their own sound, you know. And uh, the A minor sound, at an individual sound, isn't going to be an uh, issue. So don't be afraid to use the same chords over and over. In fact, I think that's um, another way of developing your own style, sort of, you know. Uh, I said A minor, because that's a chord I use a lot. Um, before I start playing anything, though, actually, I just want to say, I keep my guitar, uh, both my guitars actually tuned down a whole uh, step in D, G, C, F, A, D. Uh, the reason I do that is because a lot of songs I play are in this tuning. And if I'm in standard tuning and I want to play a song that's drop a step, then I have to tune it. And that's just a bit of a pain in the ass. And then you have to tune it back to standard if you want to play a song in standard. Um, but it's not necessarily true because I keep it in this tuning and if I ever want to play a song as standard, I just take a capo and put it on second. And then you have, that sounds a bit out of tune, but I'm not going to worry about it. So, uh, yeah, you can just switch back and forth real easily by putting a capo on second and then taking it off. Uh, saves a lot of time. And, um, yeah, most of the songs I play are drop the step anyway, or right. And, um... So anyways, I was talking about earlier about uh, chords you like. And I mentioned A minor as an example, because that's one I like to use a lot. Uh, C by itself. Now, keep in mind, this is drop down a whole step. So if you play an A minor on a standard guitar, it's not going to sound like this. But same finger position anyway. Um, so by itself, uh, you know, it sounds like a chord to me. It doesn't sound ultra appealing or anything. But I just find... Uh, you can use it in a lot of situations. It goes well with almost every other chord. Not every chord can do that, you know? Some sound kind of bad together. But an A minor is a good go-to chord. It's good to come back to. And um, I mean, I use the, a lot of songs I write are in the key of A anyways. 
I think it's a, I don't know why, <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, 